Okay, so people were inside the masjid. So what's interesting about this mosque, when it was built, it was built within two to three years. But when they did the restoration, it took them four years. So it took them longer to do the restoration. Than what the when did the building. restoration take place? This was quite recently, actually. I think they, just before, two, three years before COVID, they did finish. Oh. So this is the first section. This is the inner yeah. Now, actually, so here, if you can take a picture of this, so it's light enough, you can see how the procession would have looked like um, in that sense on the outside. Ah. Oh, okay. okay, so um, you can also take a picture. And then here we're going to go into the main courtyard, and this is just a, yeah. um, oh, here's a, it's a longer stretch actually, a better picture, so you can see exactly what it looked like. Okay. And, and with, is that, is that Sultan Abdul Hamid himself there? In so picture? they would have been prepared coming for him. So he's not in any of these, he's in this picture here, if you can see, that's him there, um, in the uh, carriage, and uh, the Sheikh al-Islam would have been with him. Uh, I mean, I mean, I know, Maybe this is, but I, you, in your article, and I'd just like to mention for everybody who's going to be watching this, Dr. Yaqub has an amazing article on Middle East Eye on the Yildiz Jami. I think you mentioned that this actually is the scene yeah. of a very famous assassination attempt yeah, so on the, the Sultan. Yeah, so Armenian separatists tried to assassinate Sultan Abdul Hamid, um, and what, he was lucky, actually. What happened is, um, he, Abdul Hamid used to work on clockwork, very strict on time and so forth. On this day, for some apparent reason, he came downstairs to speak to the Sheikh al-Islam, who was leading the prayer, and he was five minutes late, and the carriage blew up, and people were killed, and he survived, um, which is very, alhamdulillah, it's what Allah Ta'ala saved him, yeah, that's course. what we believe. Yeah, of course, well. and in that sense. But it really then consolidated for him the need to be in Yildiz. So we're going to go in here, and I want you to just go in gradually yourself, and then you go up to the dome, and uh, you shall see. So as you can see, there's no mosque like this one in the city. There's no mosque like this that I've seen. Um, the Ottomans tried to, in this period, um, bring back what you would call um, Andalusian Moorish styles, which was quite common amongst the Europeans, but it was something that even the Muslims were trying to reclaim back as the imagination of Andalusia started to begin. Um, these woodworks here on the right and left, they say that Abdul Hamid did that himself as a way of wanting to contribute towards the building of the mosque. He was, he was a carpenter. He was a known carpenter. So each sultan had a particular trade that they needed to know. And his one was carpentry. His father, Abdul Majid, was a calligrapher. So when you go to Yeni Jami in Ortakoy, the calligraphy is done by his father. In, in, in Yildiz Palace, mm -hmm. would there have been, would he have had a craft, like a room where he would, you know, like probably. a TV show? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, for sure. He used to be up there. So if you could look up there, that's where he would pray. This is now the women's section. You could so go up there. Women, yeah, actually, you can go up there and uh, enjoy that section up there. It's, we'll it's the you. most impressive section in the mosque from what I've had. I've never been up there. Um, and this chandelier was given by the German Emperor Wilhelm II, which was then later uh, put up in that sense. And if you look at the Arabic style, it's very different as well, where they reintroduced the Kufi style of Arabic here. Abdul Hamid really liked the color blue. And Yildiz in Turkish means star, so this was known as the Star Mosque. Um, and you can see stars leading up to the center. Um, it, it's, it's just truly amazing. Um, One of the things you talk about in your article is like this idea of, see, maybe now Muslims think of the mosque as this sort of set, this religious space, mm -hmm. separate from the domain of politics mm -hmm. and all other such, uh, the matters of the dunya. Yeah. But for Abdul Hamid, this masjid was for him being wa dunya, right? This yeah, is... I mean, look, in, in one sense, the, the ihtaram of the mosque, which is to not come in here and, and talk about, you know, all sorts of things that are happening in your life would have continued. But in essence, this is the last mosque or the last caliphate. And in that sense, it represented a particular form of symbolic power. This is, and this is why you had the processions to, to project that authority, to project that power in terms of this was the center, this mosque was the center in that sense. And this mosque could, like I said, the Sheikh al-Islam would have been here, Abdul Hamid would have been here, and surely he would have from time to time spoken to the Sheikh al-Islam about things that would have been important, and this would have been an important moment in that sense. Um, and in some ways, ibadat and political activity, they do intersect in many, many forms. The Hajj is an example of that. Right. Zakat is an example of that. Um, even Ramadan inviting particular dignitaries would have been an example of that. 
and the Jummah would have been an example of that. I mean, and, and I'd just like to um, emphasize, we're not saying here that the religious ritual is political in of its essence. Yeah. We're saying that there was a usage of it yeah, yeah, for, for sure. political reason, because sure. siyasa was something that the Messenger yeah. of Allah yeah. right. and practiced. Yeah, sure. um, what happens to this masjid after the uh, dep deposement and then the passing of the Sultan? Well, the, uh, Mehmed Rishad would pray the Jummah here, and then Vahdeddin would pray the Jummah here. Who is the last? Yeah, so this was still known as that. But then it just sort of like, you know, was left to to decay away unfortunately until recently when the government then the current party government decided to to restore many of the mosques in the city well, why why would you think they do this one specifically would be important? I mean, it, in terms of the memory of what it represents i mean and it's interesting because i argue in the article that now some people might find this as being a bit too extravagant and now people want to have more simpler tones in their mosque but this was an imperial mosque and it was supposed to reflect that imperial idea and it's supposed to reflect um Moorish designs, North African designs, Anatolian designs, and European flavor. This is a mosque of the Khilafah. This is a mosque of the Ottoman domains, which was a, a, in power of all of those areas. And it wanted to have the artistic designs reflect that. And so you can see. Well, would Abdul Hamid bring people? Like, we know that he had many visitors and dignitaries who came from all over the Muslim world to see him. Would he bring them to the masjid? I don't know if they came inside the masjid. I mean, we have many dignitaries writing articles of them being in awe of seeing Abdul Hamid come into the masjid in horse and carriage. But I don't know if you brought them inside. I mean, this would have been, it's not that big, so it would have been very packed with a certain elite number of people in that sense. Um, but yeah, it is, it is what the mosques in Istanbul could have been. But yeah. now when we imagine mosques in Istanbul, we imagine the Mimar Sinan style mosques, right? right? right so this is Chamlija, is a reflection right, of that. Right, right. But actually, if we'd have continued on that trajectory and if there wasn't like a, a cut, which the Turkish Republic did, then who knows, these could have been the, the templates of which future mosques would have been like. Not as, 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 as extravagant, but still, you know, this could have been an interesting um, style of mosque building. I hope this isn't too controversial as a question, uh. but we're here at the last masjid, Sultanic Mosque, you, you called it. But recently, what was just built, we, we, we saw it actually, you could see it's so big. Yeah. In Usk, is it Uskudan, right? Mosque. The Chamlija Mosque, which is this yeah. gigantic mosque yeah. that can host hundreds of thousands yeah. of, of, of visitors. What do you think is the significance of that in comparison to what we are here? Um, I think what you see is the two very different um, perceptions of power, actually. Um, whereas one is about size representing a particular form of authority. Here, it's, it's in the finite detail, it's in the intricacies. Um, it's in the, it's in the, in the handwriting. It's, it's exactly. In, the it's, it's it's in this mosque, it's, it's a museum in of itself. Your eyes really have to see the different forms of calligraphy, the different ways in which the Sahaba's names are written in the mosque, the different forms of gold, the different um, handcraft. Remember, this is 